That's right, I'm back. This is your boy, the Chaotic One, and welcome to 2024 Election Night, the Democrats' Dream Edition. I did this in 2020, now we're doing it in 2024. Now, before we, I know there are going to be some wise asses in the comments saying this ain't realistic. That's the fucking point. This isn't a best case scenario, it's a dream scenario for the Democrats. There's your one and only warning. It is now 7 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Out of Georgia, Joe Biden will easily carry the state of Georgia once again, a state that was supposed to be competitive. However, due to, you know, recent uh, downfalls in the Republican Party due to their campaigning, due to Donald Trump's many, many scandals with, you know, being sued at literally once a week, it seems like, Biden and the Democrats are expected to sweep this election is being showed here in the state of Georgia as Joe Biden is expected to carry the state by 15 points, a massive swing to the left from 2020. Out of the state of Vermont, the bluest state that went to Joe Biden in 2020 is expected to do so again as he goes on to win the state's electoral votes, winning the state by around 41 percentage points. Out of the state of Virginia, Joe Biden will carry the state's electoral votes as he goes on to win the state by around 25 percentage points. Out of Kentucky, Donald Trump will continue to carry this state, despite the fact that Governor Andy Bashir was re-elected just last year, keeping the governor's mansion blue. Trump, however, will win the state of Kentucky by around 11 points, a massive dip from his numbers four years ago. Out of Indiana, is currently too close to call. Joe Biden currently has an 18-point lead over Donald Trump. This state has not gone blue on the presidential level since 2008, and it barely did so. Many called it a fluke on the on the Democrats' part due to the Great Recession and all that. However, many are still expecting Donald Trump to carry the state. We'll just have to wait and find out. Out of South Carolina, a state that has been trending blue recently, is currently too close to call as Joe Biden has a 28-point lead over Donald Trump. And here is the current electoral map. Donald Trump, whose running mate is Marjorie Taylor Greene, is currently trailing Joe Biden, with Biden has 32 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 8. As we take a look at the Senate races now, Bernie Sanders will be re-elected to the United States Senate, defeating Christina Nolan by around 46 percent, or excuse me, 56 percentage points. Out of the state of Virginia, Tim Kaine will go on to be re-elected to another term to the United States Senate, defeating Hung Chao by around 30 points. Out of Indiana, their Senate race currently too close to call. Democrats nominated a former Republican superintendent who changed parties to the Democrat and Jennifer McCormick, as she is currently leading Congressman Jim Banks by around 18%, currently running even with Joe Biden. And here is the current Senate compositions. The Republicans are at 38 Senate seats, a major lead over the Democrats is 30. However, it's going to be tough for the Republicans, as Mitch McConnell himself has said that it's going to be a difficult pathway to the Senate majority this year. Out of Vermont's governor race, Phil Scott will be re-elected to another term as governor as he goes on to defeat Charity Clark by around 35 percentage points. Still popular as ever, Phil Scott is. Out of Indiana's governor race, currently too close to call. Former Hamid Mayor Thomas McDermott Jr. is currently outperforming both Jennifer McCormick and Joe Biden as he currently leads Mike Braun by around 28 percentage points. Mike Braun has had some very controversial statements in the past, such as wanting to get rid of interracial marriages. And here is the current governor's composition. is currently tied between the Democrats and the Republicans, as the Democrats currently led by Katie Hobbs, and the Republicans being led by Kay Ivey both have 20 seats apiece. It is now 7.30 p.m., and we now have the following states having their poll closings. Out of North Carolina, at poll closings, we can announce that Joe Biden will easily flip this state to the Democrats for the first time since 2008 as he beats Donald Trump by around 13 points in the state. Out of West Virginia, Donald Trump will continue to carry this state into the Republican column as he goes on to defeat Joe Biden in the worst performance of a Republican in recent memory as he beats Biden by around 23 percentage points. Out of Ohio, it is currently too close to call. Joe Biden currently has a 34-point lead over Donald Trump, looking to win the state of Ohio and become the first Democrat to do so since Barack Obama in 2012. Out of Indiana, currently too close to call. Biden's lead has now dropped to only two points over Donald Trump. It is looking like Trump is going to keep this state in Republican hands tonight. Out of South Carolina, too close to call. Biden's lead drops to about eight points over Donald Trump. This is still anyone's game here in the state of South Carolina. 
And here is the current electoral map. Biden still leads over Donald Trump 48 to 12. Out of the Ohio Senate race, one of the many seats that Mitch McConnell and many Republican insiders said was needed in order to take the Senate majority. Well, it's staying with the Democrats as Sherrod Brown looking, it seems like he's going to be outperforming Joe Biden as he is being, his victory is being called a poll closing as he is going to defeat Frank LaRose by around 11 points in the state of Ohio, keeping the Senate seat blue for at least another six years. Out of West Virginia's center race, our Lord and Savior, the big guy himself, Big Jim Justice, will flip this Senate seat and probably the only seat that Republicans are flipping here tonight. Big Jim will go on to defeat Joe Manchin in this race by 24 points. It looks like a 24-point victory over Joe Manchin in the state of West Virginia. Our Lord and Savior is going to the United States Senate. Out of Indiana, center race currently too close to call. McCormick's lead is dropped, same as Biden's, around two points over Jim Banks. It does seem like Jim Banks will be elected to the United States Senate. And here is the current Senate composition right now. Republicans still lead 39 seats to the Democrats 31. Out of North Carolina, a state that was seen as crucial for Republicans, uh, since they were running a pretty high-profile candidates, honestly, both parties were, but Josh Stein, due to Joe Biden winning it, the state by such a wide margin, is expected to cruise to his victory to keep the North Carolina's governor ranch in blue as he defeats Mark Robinson by around 13 points. Out of West Virginia's governor race, Mac Warner will be elected as governor. Don't be fooled by his looks. He's actually almost 70. He looks great for his age. Mac Warner will be elected governor as he defeats Mayor Stephen Williams by a far less impressive margin than Big Jim and Donald Trump's as he wins by around 19 points. Out of Indiana's governor race, too close to call. Thomas McDermott is starting to struggle here in the governor's race, as he now leads around eight points over Mike Braun. It does seem like it's going to be anyone's race. This is probably going down to the wire. And out of the governor's uh, composition, it's still an even ball game between the two parties, as both the Democrats and Republicans both have 21 seats apiece. It is now 8 p.m., and we have a slew of states having their poll closings right now. Out of Alabama, Donald Trump will continue to carry this state, a deep southern state, also very red. However, it's only going to Trump by around 10 points over Joe Biden. Out of Oklahoma, Donald Trump will be the projected winner of this state as he wins here by around 18 points. These are very abysmal numbers for a Republican in these states. Out of Connecticut, Joe Biden will easily carry this state as he goes on to win it by around 35 points. Out of Delaware, Joe Biden will easily carry his home state. No surprise here. He's actually winning every single county as he beats Trump by around 34 points. Out of D.C., Joe Biden will easily carry this. No surprise here. Out of Florida, a big shock here considering Ron DeSantis' impressive 19-point victory in the state just two years prior. Joe Biden will flip the state of Florida for the first time since Barack Obama in 2012 as he goes on to defeat Donald Trump by around 11 points, uh, making inroads with Hispanics, kind of crushing Trump in the suburbs and dense rural areas. Working class voters really didn't turn out, especially rural voters still did. It's the working class voters that didn't turn out this little cycle. Out of Illinois, Joe Biden will easily carry this state, going to him by around 33 percentage points. Out of Maine, Joe Biden will be the projected winner here, going on to win the state by around 23 points. Out of Maryland, Joe Biden will get what he wants to get his largest electoral victory out of anybody ever, winning the state by around, I want to say, 49 points. Could be wrong. Out of Massachusetts, Joe Biden will get a very similar victory here, winning by a very impressive margin. Out of New Hampshire, Joe Biden is the projected winner, winning this state by a safe margin as he beats Donald Trump by around 22 points here in the state. Out of New Jersey, a state that, you know, many people originally thought could have been competitive before the midterms, uh, well, many people thought was going to be competitive at the presidential level before Republicans botched the midterms, Biden will win this state by around 29 points, it looks like, or excuse me, 31 points over Donald Trump doing very well in southern New Jersey, which is where Democrats have been dwindling over the past years. Out of Pennsylvania, Joe Biden's second home state, he will easily win here, beating Donald Trump by around 16 points, roughly the margin shift Piro beat Mastriano two years ago. Out of Rhode Island, Joe Biden will be the projected winner as he goes on to win the state by around 36 percentage points. Out of Mississippi, it is currently too close to call a state that has been quietly trending Democrat over the years. However, due to the nature of this election, Donald Trump's numbers being so fucking abysmal, Joe Biden is making it competitive as he has an 18-point lead over Donald Trump right now. 
at a Missouri. It is currently too close to call. Biden currently has a 20-point lead over Donald Trump, a state that used to be a bellwether, now safe Republican, is now going back into the competitive category for this election. At a Tennessee, currently too close to call. Biden currently has a four-point lead over Donald Trump. Interesting, not a state many people thought was going to be competitive, but it looks like that's going to be the case. Out of Ohio, Joe Biden will now be projected to win the state of Ohio. Sherrod Brown won the state earlier at poll closings during the Senate race, so it seemed inevitable for Biden to win here, as he goes on to beat Donald Trump by around six points at the end. Out of Indiana, a state that Democrats are hoping to win due to the abysmal polling numbers and due to the abysmal Republican turnout, it's not going to happen. Donald Trump is going to keep Indiana. Indiana seems far gone for the Democrats to even win, at least for the time being. Trump will go on to barely win the state of Indiana by only a point. Out of South Carolina, a big win for the Democrats. If I'm not mistaken, the last Democrat to win this was, if not Bill Clinton, it was Jimmy Carter. But Joe Biden will flip the state of South Carolina, a gain for the Democrats, as he goes on to beat Donald Trump by around three points, maxing out with suburban and black voters. And here is the current electoral map. Joe Biden has hit 202 electoral votes. He's broken 200, and Donald Trump hasn't even hit a 50 yet. He hasn't even hit 50. This is going to be a sweep for the Democrats if this continues. At a Connecticut Senate race, no surprise here, Chris Murphy will be re-elected to another term in the United States Senate, defeating Gretchen Carlson by around 30 points. At a Delaware Senate race, Tom Carper, the incumbent senator, has retired, and it was just a matter of time before Governor John Carney announced his run for the Senate and wins the Senate race, defeating Christina O'Donnell by around 34 points. At a Florida Senate race, Stephanie Murphy, a pretty good candidate to run against incumbent Rick Scott flips this Senate seat blue, a state that, you know, if Democrats were doing so well in Florida and Rick Scott's an unpo very unpopular in the state, maybe running a good candidate would do, would do the job flipping the Senate seat, and Murphy did ex exactly that, as she is expected to defeat Rick Scott by a much wider margin than, you know, Biden's victory, as she actually wins over a lot of working class voters that, you know, the few that did turn out this election and voted for Trump. Murphy will beat Scott by around 16 points. Very impressive victory for the Democrats here in the Florida Senate race. At a main Senate race, Angus King will be re-elected very easily as he defeats a Republican and Democrat in Michael Bennett and Sherry Pingree as he goes on to win by a very impressive margin. At a Maryland Senate race, Jimmy Raskin, who is succeeding the retiring Ben Cardin, will be elected to his first term to the United States Senate, defeating Robin Ficker by around 53 points. At a Massachusetts Senate race, Elizabeth Warren will be re-elected to another term as she will defeat Karen Polito by a less margin than what Biden's victory was, but it's still a massive victory nonetheless. At a New Jersey Senate race, controversial can't Senator Bob Menendez, who survived a primary challenge, his most competitive yet, though it really wasn't competitive, but to him it was, but Bob Menendez will still be re-elected to the U.S. Senate and nonetheless, defeating John Bramnick who was speculated to run for governor next year. However, he opted for a Senate race this year instead. However, Menendez will beat Bramnick by around 31 points. Out of Pennsylvania Senate race, Bob Casey Jr. will be re-elected to the United States Senate as he goes on to defeat David McCormick by around 19 points. Out of Rhode Island Senate race, Sheldon Whitehouse, the man with the greatest last name ever, will be re-elected to the United States Senate as he defeats Robert Nardolillo by around 36 points. At a Mississippi Senate race, too close to call, Omeria Scott, a very progressive uh, Democrat out of the Mississippi legislature, was nominated by the Democrats. She runs against Roger Wicker. Uh, Wicker is actually overperforming Donald Trump as of right now, as of Scott only has an eight-point lead over Wicker. At a Missouri uh, Senate race, as his president, that's a, that's a fuck up on my part, Lucas Kuntz is currently has a ten-point lead over Josh Hawley, severely underperforming Biden's numbers. At a Tennessee Senate race, too close to call, Andy Burke is currently leading over Marshall Blackburn, someone who many speculated could be Trump's running mate, but Burke currently has a four-point lead over Blackburn. At a Indiana Senate race, we can finally confirm it, Jim Banks will be narrowly elected to his first term in the Indiana Senate race. He will be heading to the U.S. Senate, however, probably by a, less un a more uncomfortable margin than he's wanting. He is going to beat McCormick by around the same margin as Trump's victory. And here is the current Senate composition. It is Democrats have tied it up. Both parties have 
40 seats in the United States Senate as of right now. At a Delaware's governor race, that says Lisa Murkowski, that should say Lisa Rochester, as Rochester will be elected as governor of Delaware. I believe she would be the first black governor of Delaware. Could be wrong, though. As she goes on to defeat Colin Bonini by around 34 points. At a Missouri's governor race, it is currently too close to call as Quentin Lucas has a 20-point lead over Jay Ashcroft currently. At a New Hampshire's governor race, currently too close to call Ann Custer currently has a odd lead over Chris Sununu. I don't even remember what that was supposed to be. Anyway, Custer currently has a lead over Sununu. Out of Indiana's governor race, a big win for the Democrats as Thomas McDermott Jr. will outperform Biden and McCormick by just enough to flip the Indiana's governor's mansion to the Democrats' side. As, you know, he will go on to defeat Mike Braun by around three percentage points. A big victory for the Democrats out of Indiana. And here is the current governor's composition as Democrats take the lead 23 seats to 21. It is now 8.30 and the only state that has their poll closing is the state of Arkansas. And no surprise here, Donald Trump will be the projected winner out of the state of Arkansas as he goes on to beat Biden by around 13 points, continuing this trend of him underperforming his numbers from 2020. Out of Tennessee, we can now announce that Trump will carry this state a big thank God from the Republicans as he beats Biden by around 8 points. Out of Mississippi, an update here, Biden's lead has now dropped to about 11 points over Donald Trump. Out of Missouri, Joe Biden will be the projected winner, or excuse me, Biden is leading by around 15 points over Trump now. And here is the current electoral map. Biden's numbers have not changed, but Trump says Trump has now broken 50 electoral votes. It's now 202 to 56 in Biden's favor. At a Mississippi Senate race, Roger Wicker will continue to outperform Trump as he will be re-elected in his closest Senate race yet as he defeats Omeria Scott by around six points. At a Missouri Senate race, a, you know, a seat that Democrats thought they could win considering Missouri is supposed to be competitive this cycle. However, Lucas Kuntz alienated a lot of independent voters that typically would have turned out for this for him, you know, since they're turning out for Biden. However, they decided not to vote this election or vote third party as Hawley will be re-elected to a second term, defeating Kuntz by around five points. At a Tennessee Senate race, Marshall Blackburn will be re-elected to a second term as she defeats Andy Burke by around eight points. And here is the current Senate composition. Republicans retaking the lead, 43 seats to the Democrats, 40. It's very slim, but Republicans might take the Senate barely. Like, it's it'll be close. Either that or these next few calls in the Senate are just going to crush your Republicans' hopes and dreams. We'll have to wait and find out. Out of New Hampshire's governor, a huge shock. D Democrats have spent years trying to get rid of Sununu, but they finally did it. Ann Custer has defeated Chris Sununu, flipping the New Hampshire's governor's mansion back to the Democrats as she defeats Chris Sununu by around six percentage points. That's a devastating loss for the Sununu dynasty up in New Hampshire. Out of Missouri's governor race, it is currently too close to call still, as Quint Lucas's lead has dropped to about 15 points over Jay Ashcroft. And here is the current governor's composition, as the Democrats are about two seats away from an outright majority, as they are now at 24 seats to the Republicans' 21. It is now 9 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Out of Arizona, Joe Biden will easily carry this state that used to be a battleground. It could potentially continue to be a battleground in future elections, just not this one, as he beats Donald Trump by around 15 points. Out of Colorado, Joe Biden will easily carry this state that has just veered straight off a cliff to the left, as Biden will beat Trump by around 28 points, it seems like. Out of Michigan, Joe Biden will be the projected winner in this state as he beats Donald Trump by, I believe, a much wider margin than Whitmer's victory two years ago, Biden winning the state by around 17 points. Out of Minnesota, Joe Biden will easily carry the state as well, beating Trump by around 22 points. Out of New Mexico, Joe Biden is the projected winner, beating Trump by around 30 or 26 points, excuse me. Out of New York, Joe Biden will be the projected winner as he beats Donald Trump by around 38 points. Out of Wisconsin, Joe Biden will easily carry this state as he beats Trump by around 15 points. Out of North Dakota, Donald Trump will be the projected winner easily out of this state. Well, not easily, but you get what I mean, beating Biden by around 19 points. Out of South Dakota, same story here. Trump will actually win here by 11, a much lesser margin than North Dakota. Out of Wyoming, the reddest state in the Union, Donald Trump will win this state as he wins this state by around 29 points. 
out of Kansas, currently too close to call, a state that has been quietly but rapidly moving to the left. Biden currently has a 20-point lead over Donald Trump. Out of Louisiana, currently too close to call, Biden has a 14-point lead over Donald Trump. Nebraska, too close to call. Biden's lead is about 12 points over Trump. A lot of these are safe, typically safe red states, but have just are being competitive due to the unpopularity of Donald Trump. Out of Texas, too close to call. Biden has a 40-point lead over Donald Trump. That is huge. And we can now make the call that Joe Biden will be re-elected as President of the United States very easily, as right now he has 292 electoral votes to Donald Trump 66. And honestly, it doesn't look like Biden's going to stop here. It seems like he's going to go far beyond the, uh, you know, 350, maybe close to 400 mark, which you have to wait and see. And we can now make a call out of Mississippi, even though it's too late. Donald Trump will be the projected winner out of Mississippi, as he barely wins the state by around one point over Joe Biden. Out of Missouri is currently too close to call still, as Biden's lead is about eight points over Donald Trump. And here is the current map, not much changing, with the exception of Mississippi being filled in for Donald Trump. Out of Michigan Senate race, Lisa Slotkin will be elected to her first term of the United States Senate, succeeding Debbie Stabenow, as Republicans did decide to run Bill Huizenga, However, due to Trump's massive defeat in the state, Huizenga couldn't really do anything to counterbalance it for a victory for Republicans, so Slotkin will easily cruise to her first term. At a Minnesota Senate race, Amy Klobuchar will easily be re-elected to another term as she beats Tim Pawlenty by a massive margin. At a New Mexico, Martin Heinrich will be re-elected to another term as he defeats Aubrey Dunn Jr. by around 26 points. At a New York, Kirsten Gillibrand, very controversial amongst everybody, she'll be re-elected, defeating Lee Zeldin by a much by a lesser margin than Biden, but still a massive defeat for Lee Zeldin. This, even if Zeldin had a victorious close call in New York just two years ago. At a Texas center race, the fact that we're calling this a poll closing says a lot about Ted Cruz, as Tracy E. Andrus will flip this Senate seat blue. Some random ass guy has run for uh, Senate out of Texas, and he's going to beat Ted Cruz just due to how unpopular Ted Cruz is and the fact of how. Poorly, Republicans are doing this cycle. Andrus will defeat Ted Cruz by around 14 points at the end of the day. Out of Wisconsin Senate race, Tammy Baldwin will be re-elected to another term to the United States Senate as she defeats Mike Gallagher by around 10 points. Gallagher was so close to making this Senate seat competitive, but no dice. Out of North Dakota Senate race, Kevin Kramer will be re-elected to a second term to the U.S. Senate as he defeats Joel Heitkamp by around 19 points. Out of Wyoming Senate race, John Barrasso will be re-elected himself, defeating Mary Throne by around 29 points. And out of Arizona Senate race, a three-way race as Ruben Gallego has a 22-point lead over Mark Lamb to the second place, and Kirsten Cinema, the independent, sitting there at 12%. Out of Nebraska Senate race, both Senate races are competitive, spoiler alert, but this one's the more competitive out of the two as Scott Cleave currently has a 22-point uh, lead over Deb Fisher. Deb Fisher, not really liked by Nebraskans. It's kind of eh there, but Scott Cleave is able to speak to a lot of rural voters despite being a progressive. Now out of the special uh, election out of Nebraska, and Ed Dubas is not doing as well as Scott Cleave is. However, she is currently leading Pete Ricks by around 12 points. And here is the current Senate composition. Democrats have taken the lead, I believe, for the first time this night, as they lead Republicans 46 to 45. It, it seems like it's game over for the Republicans, ain't it? Out of North Dakota's governor race, Doug Burgum, who is apparently a billionaire, by the way, uh, has been re-elected to another term as governor. I think it's his last term, to be honest with you, as he goes on to defeat Joshua Bashi by around 14 points. Out of Missouri's governor race, currently too close to call still, as Quentin Lucas' lead drops to about 10 points over Jay Ashcroft. And here is the current governor's composition. Democrats so close to a majority, they only need two seats, as they are 24 to 22. It is now 10 p.m., and the following states have poll closings. Out of Nevada, Joe Biden will easily carry the state of Nevada once again, as he defeats Donald Trump by around 17 points. Out of Iowa, it is currently too close to call. Biden looking to flip the state again like another 2012 Democrat state that Obama won last, back to the Democrat column as he is currently leading Trump by around 34 points. Out of Montana, currently too close to call, becoming the first Democrat since Bill Clinton to win the state. Biden is leading Donald Trump by around 18 points. Let's see if he can do it. Out of Utah, 
Honestly, I don't even remember when the last time a Democrat won Utah, but Joe Biden is currently leading Trump by around eight points, which doesn't seem like a good sign that he will win the state of Utah. Out of Texas, Joe Biden is the projected winner out of the state of Texas. Blexus has become a re reality on the presidential level as Biden flips the state first time since, I believe, Jimmy Carter. And as you can see here, Biden will have an impressive nine-point victory out of the state of Texas, defeating Donald Trump, Trump bottoming out with suburban voters, bottoming out with the turnout for Hispanic and working-class voters, as that's really what is the key to Biden's massive victory here, that being Hispanic and working-class voters not turning out. Out of Kansas, it's still too close to call. Biden's lead drops to about 12 points over Donald Trump out of Louisiana. Biden's lead is now about 11 points over Trump. Out of Nebraska, Biden's lead is now about three points. Out of Missouri, Biden now has a lead of about four points. And here is the current electoral map. Joe Biden is now 338 electoral votes to Donald Trump 72. Let's see what happens. Out of the Nevada Senate race, Jackie Rosen will re be re-elected to a second term to the United States Senate as she defeats Joey Gilbert by around 22 percentage points as Joey Gilbert is a terrible candidate. He's even doing worse than Trump right now. Out of Montana, Senate race too close to call. Another Senate seat that, you know, Republicans said they needed if they wanted the majority back. John Tester currently leads Tim Sheehy by around 28 points, it looks like. Out of Utah, Senate race currently too close to call. Ben McAdams is currently outperforming Joe Biden, it seems, as he has an 18-point lead over Jason Chavez, who primaried out Mitt Romney. Out of Arizona Senate race, we can now make a technical gain. At like, like even if Cinema had won, it still would have gone to the Democrats' numbers. But it's a technical gain, as Ruben Gallego will win the Arizona Senate race for the Democrats as he goes on to win by around five points over Mark Lamb, and Kirsten Cinema does take 12% of the vote. At a Nebraska Senate race, too close to call. Scott Cleves' lead now drops to about 13 points over Deb Fisher. And out of the other Nebraska Senate race, Annette Dubaz's lead is now about three points over Pete Ricketts. And here's the current Senate composition. Democrats itching closer to the 50 Senate seat mark. They're hoping they'd get more, but this is such a polarized Senate map, it's kind of ridiculous. But Democrats lead 48 to 45. Out of Utah's governor race, Spencer Cox is the projected winner as he goes on to defeat Neil Hansen by around 11 points. Out of Montana's governor race, too close to call, as Casey Schreiner is currently leading a pretty popular governor in Greg Jean Forte by around 8 percentage points, but, you know, Jean Forte could be affected by the uh, down-ballot effect if Biden does win the state of Montana, which we we'll have to wait and see. Out of Missouri's governor race, too close to cost still. Lucas is now has a 5-point lead over Jay Ashcroft. This is absolutely going down the wire. And here's the current governor's composition. It doesn't seem like Democrats are going to win an outright majority at the governor's level, at least not right now. They are at 24 seats to the Republican 23. The Republicans have been gaining governor seats the more we go through the night. It is now 11 p.m. and the following states have poll closings. Out of California, no surprise here, Joe Biden is the projected winner as he wins the state by around 43 points. Another no surprise, Biden wins the state of Hawaii by a massive margin. Same thing out of the state of Oregon, Biden wins here by a big margin. Out of Washington, same story here as well. Massive margin. Out of Ohio, Donald Trump will be the projected winner, winning the state by a very slow margin. That's typical for Idaho. A 16-point margin. And now we can make a big call at the state of Iowa as Joe Biden will flip the state of Iowa for the first time since 2012. Following in the footsteps of Barack Obama, who he served as vice president under, Biden will win the state of Iowa by around 6 points over Donald Trump. At the state of Utah, Donald Trump will keep the state of Utah. That's a Another big thank God from the Republicans, as Trump will win the state of Utah by a six-point margin. I think the closest it's ever been. Out of Louisiana, Trump will carry this steep southern state that was more competitive than it needed to be, as Trump wins here by around three points. Out of Nebraska, Donald Trump will win the state. Hopefully he can carry Deb Fisher and Pete Ricketts to the finish line, as they are both in competitive races as well. Trump does win the state of Nebraska by around three percentage points. Out of Montana, it is still too close to call. Biden's lead now about 10 points over Trump. Out of Kansas, too close to call. Biden's lead continuing to get narrower and narrower as he's only now leading by around three points. Out of Missouri, too close to call. A statistical tie between the two candidates. It's honestly a 
coin flip in this state as of right now. It's a coin flip as to who wins it. And here is the current electoral map. Joe Biden has broken the 400 electoral vote mark as he is now at 423 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 92. It'll be interesting to see if Trump actually gets above 90 or 100 electoral votes. Excuse me. Out of California Senate race, Katie Porter will be elected to her first term in the U.S. Senate, defeating or succeeding Dianne Feinstein, who retired this year. Though I don't know if she has that big of a say in it. Anyway, Katie Porter will go on to defeat Adam Schiff by around 22 points due to all the Republicans going to support her, as well as her being progressive in a very progressive heavy state. Schiff really didn't have a chance here. Out of Hawaii Senate race, Maziarona will be re-elected to another term of the U.S. Senate, defeating Duke Iona by around 40 points. Out of Washington Senate race, Mariah Cantwell, who kind of looks like an actress from Marvel. What was her name? Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, that one. She'll be re-elected to another term as she defeats uh, Jane Butler by around 31 points. And we can now project that the U.S. Senate majority will stay with the Democrats. Democrats will now have a six, six years of uh, Senate majority rule. Not used to that one, honestly. As they are now currently at 51 seats to the Republicans, 45. If Republicans stay at 45, the Democrats can expect 55 seats in the U.S. Senate. F scratch that. At a Nebraska Senate race, the special one, Pete Ricketts will be elected to his... to the remainder of Ben Sass's term. I can't say to a full term, but to the remainder of Ben Sass's term, as he goes on to defeat Annette Dubas by around the same margin Trump did. At a Montana Senate race, still too close to call, John Tester's lead now about 15 points over Tim Sheehy. At a Utah Senate race, too close to call. This being surprisingly closer than the presidential race, Ben McAdams now has a seven-point lead over Jason Chavetz. At Nebraska Senate race, Scott Cleve continuing to make inroads with those rural voters has a four-point lead over Deb Fisher. And here is the current Senate composition. Democrats have 51 states, so the Republicans 46. Out of Washington's governor race, Jay Inslee. I know he's retired. He's announced he's retiring, but I made this before that announcement. He will be re-elected to another term as governor of Washington, defeating Bruce Damier by around 34 points. Out of Montana's governor race, Greg Sean-Forte will be re-elected very narrowly as he goes on to defeat Casey Schreiner by around 6 points, outperforming both Tim Sheehy and Donald Trump in the state. And out of Missouri's governor race, still too close to call. This one's also going to a coin flip, though it seems like Lucas has a slight advantage here as he has a 2-point lead to where Biden had a statistical tie with Trump. And here is the governor's composition. Democrats can at least expect a tied governor's mansion as the Democrats have 25 seats and the Republicans 24. It is now 1 a.m. We now have poll closings out of the state of Alaska. It is currently too close to call Dag Gummit as Biden currently has a 30-point lead over Donald Trump. However, we can call that Montana will go to Donald Trump. It will stay with him. A kind of sigh of relief for Republicans can be heard as he wins the state by a very narrow one-point margin. At a state of Kansas, currently too close to call, Biden has a three-point lead over Donald Trump. At a Missouri, too close to call, that statistical tie is still there. However, it is now leaning in favor of Donald Trump. And here is the current, <coughs> excuse me, the current electoral map. Trump has that chance to break 100 electoral votes, but Biden sure as hell is breaking 400 electoral votes as he has 423 to Trump's 96. Out of Montana Senate race, another screw up out of the Republicans as John Tester will be re-elected to another term in a race that he could have easily been beaten. However, due to a lot of circumstances, that's not going to happen. Tester will defeat Tim Sheehy by around three points, his closest margin yet. Out of Utah Senate race, that this one's a big sigh of relief. Like it's a lot. That sigh of relief here in for Republicans a lot more audible now. Jason Chavetz will be re elected to his first term of the Senate, defeating Ben McAdams in a very close Senate race, a one-point lead, a one-point margin of victory over Ben McAdams is what seals the deal. Out of Nebraska Senate race, too close to call, Scott Cleve lead is now about two points over Deb Fisher. Democrats could end up winning a Senate seat out of Nebraska. I believe it was either Bob Carey or Ben Nelson, that was, I think it was Ben Nelson who was the last senator a Democrat senator out of Nebraska. I think he retired in 2008. Could be wrong, though. Either 08 or 12. It was one of the two. But they could have another Senate seat at Nebraska, which would be a very damaging blow to the Republicans. 
and here's the current Senate composition. Democrats are now looking, they could potentially only now have 53 seats, however, Republicans still end up taking that Nebraska Senate seat and giving Democrats a 52-seat majority. At a Missouri's governor race, too close to call, Lucas's lead continuing to dwindle by the minutes. Here's the current governor's composition. Democrats at 25, Republicans at 24. The Missouri governor race is essentially going to seal the fate of the National Governors Association. Will Democrats have the governor's majority for the first time in over a decade, or will Republicans force a tie? It is now 1.15 a.m. We can now make a call out of the state of Alaska, and Joe Biden will flip the state of Alaska. I believe the first time Alaska has gone blue on the presidential level since LBJ's landslide victory in 1960. Yeah, 1964 over Barry Goldwater. A huge impressive victory for the Democrats, even though Alaska has been silently trending red, blue, I mean, for the past few years, as Biden's victory is a four-point victory over Donald Trump. It is now 1.30 a.m. We can now make a call out of the state of Kansas. Donald Trump will barely, and I mean barely, keep the state of Kansas in a Republican column as he goes on to defeat Joe Biden by around 0.8%. Very, very narrow victory. Many people are, would have, are, have assumed that Biden was going to win it due to Laura Kelly's victory just two years ago. However, it's just not there yet. Trump is has, has a grip on that state. Not a tight one, but a grip nonetheless. It is now 1.45 a.m. We can now make a call out of Missouri. A state that really would have been detrimental to Republicans as it would have shown breed new life into Democrats in the state of Missouri. However, Donald Trump is going to win this state by around 0.5%. Hell, when I said earlier about Democrats needing breath and a new breath of fresh air, this actually might be it here in the state of Missouri with it being so close, the closest it's been since 2008. And speaking of Missouri, it's Governor Ace J. Ashcroft will be elected as governor. However, his victory is a lot narrower, only 0.2%. It is now 2 a.m. We can now make a call out of the state of Nebraska. That Senate race, Scott Cleave, will be the first Democrat elected since, I believe, Ben Nelson. It could have been Bob Carey, but we're just going to assume it's Ben Nelson. As Scott Cleave will be elected as a U.S. Senator out of the state of Nebraska as a Democrat. Someone who is very socially conservative, yet economically progressive. It'll be very interesting to see how he votes in the United States Senate. If I had to guess, he will probably be a thorn in both parties' sides. I can't wait to say it. It's going to be hilarious. However, he does end up beating Deb Fisher by around 0.3%. Very narrow victory for Scott Cleave. He's probably DOA in 2030. Yeah, 2030. And here is the final electoral map. Trump did break 100 electoral votes. Joe Biden has a total of 426 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 112. And here is the marginal map. The closest Democrat won uh, state was, of course, I believe the state of South Carolina, where Biden won it by around three points. And Donald Trump and the Republicans' closest state was, of course, the state of Missouri, I think, with about a 0.5% victory. I believe so. And here's the final Senate composition. Democrats, you know, they didn't get their filibuster-proof majority due to how polarized the map was. However, they did get a 53-seat majority, which is still their largest Senate majority in a while. And Republicans are now at 47 seats. The final governor's composition map. Both parties are at 25 seats, so nothing's going to happen. It's still going to bounce back and forth And who's the chair of the NGA. And here is the current House map. The Democrats have taken control. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The Democrats have taken control of the U.S. House of Representatives, and they actually have a two-thirds majority. Uh, technically, a two-thirds majority is 290 seats. The Democrats have 291 seats. As Hakeem Jeffries will become the first Black Speaker, or at least that's the assumption, since he leads the Democrat Party. Kevin McCarthy probably will never will probably retire in 2026 and if he doesn't he'll never pro be close to the speakership again and here is the current map a lot of areas that are typically red on this map are changed to blue i'll give you a few seconds to look at that thank you guys so much for watching i'm back uploads won't be consistent but they'll be there thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe this is the chaotic one saying Peace.